There's a company called Ginkgo Bioworks. They use Google Cloud Compute and AI to program cells with genetic variations of, for instance, yeast, to produce CBD for cannabis companies without the need for soil, seeds, or long growing cycles. A cannabis company hires Ginkgo Bioworks to produce massive amounts of product in a very short amount of time. I found out about Ginkgo Bioworks while studying Moderna and how they used a third-party company called National Resilience to spin up their COVID-19 vaccines at scale. Resilience focuses heavily on gene therapies, which, thanks to the latest definition change, now lives partly under the umbrella of vaccines. You know, for all the pandemics the global elite keeps telling us we're about to face. But back to Ginkgo Bioworks. Ginkgo was really started with the idea that DNA is code. Now we are reaching this point where we can actually program with that code. And if you think about the types of programs that are possible with DNA, now we're talking about mRNA vaccines and we're talking about producing chemicals and food with biology and not with traditional chemistry and physics in ways that destroy our planet. It's really exciting to see Google take such a bet on, on us and on this space. Biology is really the only technology that is capable of dealing with human health, obviously, yes. but also the big challenges we face around climate change. We need biological solutions and, and this technology and, and Google's investment here, I think is a big step towards doing that. We should get to a point where you can open up a simple interface and say, look, I've got an idea and speak to that interface in human language. I wanna make a cell that can produce this you know, interesting molecule. I, I want to create a variety of corn that's drought resistant and be able to then translate that into genetic code. Generative AI has the opportunity to help bridge what we understand as humans and what DNA is capable of doing. One of the reasons we partnered with Google is because of your expertise in building some of the first and most transformative models in the DeepMind team, you know, AlphaFold came out of Google, being able to bridge the technologies that already exist in AI and our data and our data generation capabilities so that we can help these models also recursively learn as they're generating ideas. Ginkgo Bioworks is building a new way to speak DNA. So I was always taught, if you want to understand what's happening in the world, Look at where the money and power leans, and then ask yourself what other intentions might explain their behavior, which is usually what this narrator aims to do. This narrator also intends to remain neutral to whether any of this is good or bad. So now let's examine what we just heard. Ginkgo Bioworks is the new way to speak DNA. If you want drought-resistant corn, Google Cloud Compute can produce a novel genetic code of which Ginkgo Bioworks will own the patent. Some may wonder whether they're allowing AI to produce every possible genetic code in order for them to buy up all the possible patents, just like the dot-com entrepreneurs did with domain names. The lady also mentioned all these old, pesky ways of growing food and making medicine that are driving climate change. If you agree that nature is being deranged at industrial scales, but disagree that cow farts and personal vehicles are to blame, you're not alone. Let's now learn about Ginkgo Bioworks as a vertically integrated Amazon-style platform that seeks to genetically modify major sectors of many of our economic goods. Ginkgo Bioworks is one of the largest synthetic biology companies now. They have these series of literally like biological factories. They're called Bioworks or, or foundries. They're all based in Cambridge, um, you know, single cell biology in a massively parallel fashion. End of every workday, they might be behaving slightly differently than they did at the beginning of the workday. How we think about the future of investing, multiplicative effects of all of these different like exponential cost curves uh, colliding in such a way that you get totally freakish and alien output. Ginkgo Bioworks is building a horizontal platform to program cells for every type of application, from pharma and biotech to food and agriculture, and even consumer products. Right, so, so if you take a bite out of that Impossible Whopper or at Burger King, it's gonna bleed hemoglobin, which is what makes blood red, which you don't really find at high levels in plants, into the burger. So where does it come from? Well, they took brewer's yeast, like they used to use to make beer, and they program it like you'd program a computer. That platform really has two parts, their code base of cells, enzymes, and genetic programs that they use to jumpstart new projects, and Ginkgo's automated foundries. 
foundries and this concept of programming biology is foreign to uh, almost everybody. We jointly develop the concept of a cell program, and they'll continue to develop that using code base from our collection. That code base is a long-term competitive advantage for Ginkgo Bioworks with over 440 million proprietary gene sequences acquired so far. Ginkgo will organize the world's biological code and make it useful. And then bring a lot of concepts in, robotics, liquid handling instruments, wide array of sophisticated machinery and instrumentation that we use to amplify and multiply what our scientists are able to do in our foundry. So, so Ginkgo's business is, you know, we program cells project with Moderna last March. Right? We're like an AWS for programming biology. You know, McKinsey projects two to four trillion dollars uh, for cell applications. So Ginkgo Bioworks makes money in two ways. When the robots do the actual work, and then through a revenue sharing model, when you invest in Ginkgo, you're also investing in the clients they take on. So later you'll see a little bit more about Moderna's excitement for using Ginkgo as their production facility. But I want to take you back to this image that you saw in this past video. It's in regards to the major sectors of the economy that stand to have their DNA rearranged. In pharma and biotech, this company seeks to genetically modify antibodies, antibiotics, nucleic acids like national resilience, our microbiome, and all gene-based therapies. They have their investors considering the future of wastewater remediation, renewable chemicals, PFAS degradation, sustainable building materials, and carbon sequestration. These last few applications of AI-driven gene editing is kind of neat, but I wonder if it's really a way for big tech like Google to control what kinds of solutions are allowed to be considered and used for large-scale problems like industry's impact on the earth. Look at this, animal protein replacement. My guess is some kind of Klaus Schwab cricket recipe since cows, our old way of getting protein, are supposedly driving climate change. Every meal you make, every bite you take, every single lunch with a crispy crunch, you will eat a box. Ginkgo, on the other hand, is using yeast to produce hemoglobin, like in our blood, in order to make fake burgers bleed. Now, pest control is another interesting application because, once again, we have to trust that Google knows how to distinguish between the natural and important circle of life and bugs that simply need exterminated. Ginkgo is also associated with Genomatica, which, for instance, creates plant-based fabrics for Lululemon so their yoga pants don't have harmful forever chemicals getting into women's you-know-whats when they forget to wear underwear. Now, that's an application that doesn't sound all that bad. So wait. They're not just trying to poison and kill us all? Which is it? Are they evil or are they the good guys? I told you I wouldn't distinguish between good or bad, and I mean it. So now let's hear from Nicole Stevenson, the director of data science at Kinko. So we usually start with a new application, um, so a need for a model. Um, and first we go out and identify a training data set, um, which for us is typically some kind of disease surveillance data. Um, and this data has a lot of challenges in and of itself. Um, and we do use different machine learning functions to actually um, curate that data. Um, after we have our training data set, we'll go out and look for epidemiologically relevant predictor data sets. Um, and this is really the fun part when we go out and explore new types of data that we want to integrate into our models. So disease surveillance data sets are what Ginkgo really likes to use. These data sets come from institutions like the WHO, monitoring things like the COVID tracker function on people's smartphones. And the WHO has recently been afforded a power through a treaty by the UN to act as a sort of bank, to loan countries money at interest, which never seems to work out well for most people or countries, and these loans are given if a novel disease is discovered in one of these countries. If a novel disease is found, then the WHO can orchestrate lockdowns, quarantines, business closures, and, well, just think of COVID lockdowns, but in select locations according to the discretion of the WHO themselves. We are going closer and closer to unknown viruses and pathogens, and they are coming closer and closer to us. We, we are pretty sure that there will be outbreaks, but what we can do from our side is prepare for it. You know, it's prepared for it in the sense the, the, the areas that we mentioned in 
terms of the um, surveillance, in terms of the uh, access to medicines, vaccines, and others. We need to get out of the WHO. We, we don't want more pandemics. We don't want them controlling public health, and we don't want them restricting. The, the current draft of the International Health Regulation Amendments says that the director of WHO will be able to tell us what drugs we can use during a pandemic and what drugs we can't use. He can restrict us. So he can say, you're getting remdesivir only, you know, no hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin or vitamin D. We cannot let this happen. Health care has to be conducted at the individual level between a healthcare provider and a patient. But that's a huge tangent that's neither here nor there. Now, here's the CEO of Ginkgo alongside the CEO of Moderna. The biotech industry in particular is extraordinarily product focused. They have like, you know, like it's like this one drug, what, you know, right? And, and, the, and we've seen in the tech industry the success of horizontal platforms and the scale they can get to. And, and, I, and I think, you know, what Salon's building at Moderna, what we're trying to do at, at Ginkgo is horizontal platform technology that gets better with scale. It does open the door for a biotech industry that feels and looks and has the scale that's more like the tech industry. And, you know, and, and I, I'm, curious, I'm curious if you agree with this, Stefan, but, but like, I also feel like COVID has been this like incredible educator uh, to the general public about, you know, for example, the fact that, that DNA and RNA are code, right? That you can read it and write it like you read and write software code. And then you can program, you know, in, the, in Madera's case, the cells in your own body to do things, right? And, and like code is a flexible thing, right? Like the, the reason the tech industry looks the way it does is because it runs on digital code. That's why you see horizontal platforms like AWS and Windows and all these things. Because at the end of the day, inside the computers, zeros and ones, it's common code. Well, biology works the same way. Where, where are the platform companies, right? And honestly, they're, they're here in Boston, right? Like it's happening, you know? Like, like, and, and, and I think COVID is this, it, it's, a, it's an accelerant. You hear the way they're talking about DNA? Now, I bet you thought that the transhuman agenda was orchestrated by reptilian overlords in ancient religious costumes performing strange rituals. Nope. They're wearing suits and ties and are beholden to stockholders that you'll never meet or ever hear the names of, and they're mainly interested in cornering markets and treating the genetic codes of all life like granular data for profiteering in the name of saving the planet. Wait a minute. I thought I said I wasn't going to make value statements about Ginkgo Bioworks. It sounds an awful lot like I'm equating this company with purely evil intentions of some global domination agenda. Well, I'm not. I actually am curious to see this company evolve and the gray area that they'll likely inhabit between pure evil and pure love and light like all the Republicans and Democrats mistakenly think they belong to. You're all brainwashed, and it's not just the media that sows division and discord among the people. If you've ever posted anything on social media, complaining about another certain kind of person or group of assholes, you're a hypocrite, and Jesus forgives you. Ginkgo Bioworks, on the other hand, is likely going to steal your genetics and turn you into an impossible whopper if you don't watch yourself. See you all next time on another depressing episode of F My Life. <laughs>